Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the uh, careers that you didn't know about, the, the uh, status of the water and wastewater industry, and the people that run it. Uh, with me for this episode five, we are live broadcasting from the uh, Connecticut section at CAVE, which is the annual vendor conference and technical expo. And uh, with us is our uh, professor at the Gateway Community College, uh, Professor Wes Winterbottom. Hi, Wes. How are you? Doing fine, David. How are you? All right. Uh, well, thanks for coming over and taking time. I know you have a booth here today uh, as far as uh, that goes over in the uh, vendor area. So uh, I know you've helped me tremendously throughout the years in developing my curriculum for our Water and People class, um, which we taught at... Uh, uh, Portland High School and also Bloomfield uh, High School. So uh, tell us about your day job. Okay, so my day job is I'm a professor at uh, Gateway Community College, which is located in downtown New Haven, and I teach some courses, including chemistry and some environmental science classes. And additionally, I oversee two programs, one of which is uh, an associate's degree in public utility management, and the other is a certificate of achievement in water management, which trains operators for water treatment facilities and that's what i think we're going to focus our discussion on today yeah yeah um basically i know uh we have a memorandum of understanding uh and so forth uh with your college uh, as far as our, our water and people class and uh uh, basically, if you pass our water and people class and uh, pass the state uh, operator and training exam, uh, you're able to get a, uh, a advanced credit on your uh, environmental 101 class. So that was a tremendous achievement. Yeah, if you if you uh, take the water and people class and, and then you take the Connecticut Department of Public Health small system operator certification examination and pass it, then you can get... Uh, credit for it's actually ENV 110, which is environmental regulations. That's one of the courses that's actually required by the uh, utility management program as well as the water management program. Yeah. Now uh, the the water man. Now that's a, a, a four score a four course component that you have. Well, it's it's four or or five. The the, um, the you can get certified in uh, water treatment and water distribution. So if you're, if you're planning to want to get certified in uh, both water treatment and water distribution, the advice that we give students is that you should take uh, five courses instead of four. You can get the certificate with four, but if you go on and take the certification test, it makes, tests, makes sense to take the specialized courses in both water treatment and uh, distribution. Nice. Um, so, you know, basically it's... it's uh, what do you see as far as the demographic of your of your students that are coming into the program now? Are they uh, high school students? Are they uh, career changers? What What do you see? Well, in terms of the demographics, we do get some high school students, not not that much. You have to appreciate that at community colleges, I think our median age is twenty nine or thirty. Okay. So our students are a bit older. Um, but uh, we do get a lot of people are interested in changing uh, careers. Um, we also uh, who have never gone to college and we also uh, we get quite a few students who already have bachelor's degrees and they uh, for whatever reason may be dissatisfied with the career or the job that they have and, uh -huh. they, and they find that uh, well geez I can go to Gateway and um, you know if you're willing to go to school three nights a week you can complete the certificate in uh, two semesters and then you can get yourself a pretty good job in the uh, water treatment and distribution industry. I've never had a time in my career, and I've been doing this for a while, where I've seen more job announcements come into my emails or had more water companies calling me saying that they need certified operators. Do you have any that you can send to us? Yeah, yeah, I think that's going to be the... Uh uh, the mantra throughout the industry. Uh, I, you know, I, I think our episode uh, three uh, of, of our podcast series, I had uh, Bill Sullivan, who's the head of the operator certification for the State Department of Public Health. And the, uh, you know, the, the statistics for retiring uh, employees and operators is staggering. Uh, you know, I think uh, Bill said, I think w when I started uh, 40 plus years ago, I, I think there were like 800 operators in the state. Now he says, uh, you know, due to attrition and so forth, we're down, you know, in the 400 range. And uh, that's that's pretty st staggering. You know, when you figure most of the operators um, that are certified throughout the state are over the age of 50 and uh, <laughs> looking at retirement. Yeah. I can, I, 
You're, you're right about that because here we are at, at At Cave, and as I'm walking around and seeing former students that I used to have, yep. that I've had in the past, and it's they're not as young as they used to be. <laughs> and the interesting thing is what some water utilities have started to do is to hire people as operators that are not certified because they, when they go to hide, find certified operators, they can't find any. Right, right. And what they will do is they will hire them provisionally with the understanding that they will have their tuition and books paid for, but they need to get the certifications from the health department within a year or, or two years. They usually place some, uh, some time limit uh, on it. So that's, that's right. another indication that the job market is, uh, is very, very good. Sure. You know, I know um, we've both been doing this a long time, but, uh, you know, what, what, what sparked your interest in, in, in following your career path and in, in educating, uh, you know, especially on the water sector side? Well, I started out um, when I graduated from Cornell I, in a, with, a, with a master's in uh, environmental engineering. I, was, I worked for the Connecticut Department of, now it's the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection as a regulator for a number of years. And I uh, did that, you know, moved up a bit, had a lot of people working for me, ran some programs. And then uh, for some reason I decided I'd see what it would be like to teach a course uh, part-time at a community college. Uh -huh. So I was hired by uh, Northwestern uh, out in uh, Winstead to teach a course. And I immediately uh, fell in love with uh, teaching at a community college. So uh -huh. I taught at Northwestern for a year and a half and then I was fortunate to uh, be hired by uh, Gateway for oh, a full-time okay. position. Nice, nice. Well, I think you've been. How, how long you've been at Gateway now? I think it's about twenty-eight years now. <laughs> time, time. <laughs> you're still on the honeymoon. Time flies when you're having a good time. But uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, joys of what I do is 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 doing the water management program because uh, we get tremendous support from the uh, individual water companies, and we also get tremendous support from the industry. It's one of these things where if I need something or I need a pitch of advice or should we do this, should we do that, all it takes is a phone call. There you and, go. Uh, they people, know who to call. Yeah, and people just uh, go out of their way to be supportive of the, the program at uh, Gateway. And the reason that we have the utility management program is also because the utilities in Connecticut came to Gateway and Southern and said, we're, we're, not only do we need operators, we also need managers. Sure. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is with the careers in the, in the water industry, you don't necessarily have to have a college degree to get started. You know, I think uh, that's one of the important things. I mean, a lot of, a lot of students are, uh, I don't want to say brainwashed, but, you know, they think that they have to go to the college route and so forth. And, uh, you know, there are plenty of careers within the industry, okay, that are stable careers that are, uh, you make a great living, okay, and uh, you, you've got security. Uh, and it, 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 these types of careers uh, cannot be outsourced, okay, overseas. Uh, you need boots on the ground to, to operate and run these treatment plants and facilities and the distribution system. So I think, uh, you know, the... the uh, the water uh, industry as a whole, okay, uh, has a lot to offer, uh, especially young students. Yeah, that's one of the, you said the very significant word about is there's stability in the industry because I can't tell you how many people in their, you know, late 20s, 30s, 40s that have, you know, worked for a number of years, been laid off once, been laid off twice, and they come to Gateway and I say, well, you know, if you work for a water, if you work for a utility, uh, people still drink water, they flush the toilet, they use electricity, and they use natural gas uh, when the economy is doing well. And when the economy is not doing well, they still flush the toilet, drink water, use natural gas, and uh, use electricity. And there you go. So that's, that's one of the nice things about it is utilities do not cycle up and down. And the other interesting thing is that uh, utilities have tuition reimbursement programs. Yep. So if you were to come to uh, Gateway and do the water management program and then get hired, Yep. It, it's more likely than not that your employer will pay for you to get a, a associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and you can even move on to a uh, to a master's degree. One of the uh, in one of the utilities in, in Connecticut uh, basically guarantees that uh, they'll pay the tuition and books for any employee who wants to do the water management or the public utility management program, and that's not uncommon. And there's also scholarships from the Connecticut right. section of the AWWA, the Regional Water Authority has scholarships. Sure. 
and the Connecticut Water uh, Works Association yeah, also has yeah. a scholarship. And we just got a new scholarship from the Connecticut Power and Energy Society as well. So there's a lot of uh, things that are there. And the other thing about tuition is, and I, I, I'm not exactly completely clear on the parameters, but there is free tuition for uh, an associate's degree. Now, there are some parameters in terms of who's qualifies for that, but uh, I think the target audience for that is mostly people right out of high school, but you can essentially go tuition-free for a community college with some stipulations and get an associate's degree, not by not paying any tuition at all. So that's another another wow. opportunity. Wow, yeah, that's, that's huge. You know, we had uh, our uh, my episode two. Basically, I had uh, Miss Maureen Westbrook, who's the uh, president of the Connecticut Water Company, uh, come on, and uh, she's been a colleague in the industry for many, many years. And like yourself, uh, started out at, uh, at at DPH uh, years and years ago, and uh, you know, uh, transitioned into the private sector. And uh, uh, Connecticut Water is is probably one of the uh, the uh, three largest uh, investor owned utilities in the state and so forth and right now she said they have on their employment page they have over uh, over 12 uh, career opportunities that are available so they're always looking and like you said they they are uh, you know very very generous with the tuition reimbursement and uh, they, they want to move up and uh, they've got a lot of systems to operate and I think you know uh, from a customer standpoint uh, uh, they have probably around 400,000 customers, and they also have, uh, 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 I think, utilities in Maine and San Jose, California. So um, uh, everybody drinks water. Yeah. One of the nice things about working for a water utility that I get is feedback from my students is that uh, they're supported by the industry. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different career paths in the industry. And... Uh, you know, most people seem to like their jobs very, very much. Sure. Very, very much. They, they, they always seem very satisfied. And it, there's not a lot of turnover in the water industry either, which I think is indicative of the fact that uh, most water utilities are very nice places to work. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, uh, and again, with the, the, the amount of careers that are, that are in the industry, obviously uh, the operator certification programs uh, for water management that, that you run, but there are also... You know your your conventional career. We still need accountants. We still need HR people. We still need salespeople. We still need uh, you know customer service people. They answer the phone. So yeah, that's the that's the that's the reason that we have the utility management program is because the utilities have all of those things that you just mentioned, Dave. And I was just chatting with somebody earlier out at, at Cave here, and he's 58 years old, and he said, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta talk to you gotta talk to students. Tell them about all these jobs that we have. And he says. You know, I turn around, and if I ever, if I ever decide um, to retire, there's nobody in line behind me. Yes, and and that's, and that's why we call it the the, the gray tsunami, uh, okay, or the uh, or in my case, the bald tsunami, as far as that goes. But you know, and uh, again, uh, you you've been in the in the industry. I'm I'm, you know, approaching 50 years in the industry, and uh, you know. The, the sad part about it is that once we retire, there's a lot of knowledge base that walks out the door. You know, yeah, that's, uh, that, as I was talking to somebody earlier today about that, too, is you need the people who know where the valves are. Yes. And why the valves got put there and when they got put there. Yes, <laughs> yes, and how they work or don't work. <laughs> and so, uh, yes. Uh, and, you know, as far as the, uh, the infrastructure and, and you know, I mean, throughout the throughout the country, like any other utility, is aging. Uh, okay, that infrastructure needs updating. That infrastructure needs uh, uh, needs maintenance. Uh, you have water leaks. You have you know main breaks. Uh, you you have new customers. Okay, service installations. Uh, you know, you can get into a whole uh, a plethora of, of careers. You've got you need meter readers to go out and and, and read the meters. Okay. And the other thing, too, from the standpoint, uh, like every industry, okay, uh, technology is, is now playing a more important part, you know, with uh, SCADA systems, with uh, uh, remote management, uh, remote reading, uh, radio read readers, and so forth. So, I mean, um, you know, some people that, uh, that are interested in IT, uh, I know there was a couple presentations over in the, uh, uh, the, the, one of the rooms on, on SCADA, which is basically uh, supervisory control and data acquisition. Um, you know, that's those are pieces of technology that are being uh, used more and more in the utilities. 
Yeah, cybersecurity is a huge issue for uh, all kinds of utilities because a lot of the stuff can be remotely controlled, which means it can be vulnerable. Yes, yeah. That's if you can get in, somebody else can get in, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it's not like... Uh, the old days, you know, we used to leave, the, you know, at home, you, you, you rarely locked your door or, or you, you left the key under the doormat. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the other things I think I should mention, too, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice story. I always like to tell it, but uh, utilities are typically pretty supportive of their employees if uh, you mentioned the technology day. You know, technology can also mean that some jobs that used to be there aren't going to be there anymore because th right. there's automation. Yep. And uh, twice the Regional Water Authority has hired Gateway to uh, run a cohort of their employees through our water management program, uh, partially on company time but with complete tuition reimbursement and purchase of textbooks to train them for new positions uh, in, the, in, in, in the regional water. And between nice. those two cohorts, it was probably 25 or 30 of their, of their employees. Because uh, like I say, uh, Utilities, by and large, are good, are good places. Uh, they're good places to work. They're supportive of their employees, and sure. they realize that change is coming. And uh, you know, most of them go out of their way to find a new place for you sure. when the change comes along. Yeah. Well, and, and again, the utilities throughout the state. Uh, you know, you got 137 towns in Connecticut. A lot of the uh, of the towns, uh, Connecticut Water manages. Uh, you know, water utilities in, in, a, in a number of towns, as does uh, Corian, and basically Corian, Connecticut Water, uh, are in, investor-owned. Uh, and uh, the other types of utilities are basically uh, the municipal utilities, which uh, I work for, the town of Portland. Uh, those are run by the municipalities. Uh, and then you have the small, uh, you know, uh, small uh, systems, okay, that, that may be only a well or a Dunkin' Donuts out in, Northeast Connecticut, someplace uh, or uh, a rest stop, and so forth. But they those those systems still need operators. They still have to be managed. They still have to be maintained, and uh, they 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 still are regulated. Yeah, one of the things that we do is um, for the uh, fall and spring semester courses, we send an email to all the community water systems in Connecticut about the course offerings and when they start and that kind of thing. And. Uh -huh. Uh, I think that list is probably in the 700. Wow! And you know, some of those are pretty small systems, but there's there's a lot of there's, there's a lot more water utilities in Connecticut than there are natural gas, electric, or uh, wastewater. Wastewater is 110 or 120, but there's an awful lot of uh, water utilities in Connecticut, which means there's a lot of job opportunities that are out there. Sure, sure. You know, I think you know so far the uh, my podcasts have been. Uh, Focusing more on the water industry, but uh, you know we're going to be dealing with with the wastewater industry. I've got uh, uh, Tom Tyler from the uh, Metropolitan District who manages their wastewater side. He's going to be coming on with a couple of his operators because um, you know you've got clean water and uh, or as or as we call it in Portland, we've got shipping and receiving. <laughs> so uh, you know yeah. there there is a wastewater side, and uh, again there are the, the same uh, uh, operator certifications that are needed on that side as well. Yeah, and, and the shortage of operators is, exists in the uh, wastewater industry uh, as well. Yes, yes, for sure. So, so tell me, what, which uh, perhaps maybe your your favorite memory in the, in the water industry? I sure I, I, I can't think of any, <laughs> anything specific, but as uh, my my significant other Beth always laughs at me because when I uh, talk about the water management program. I always have a smile on my face, and it's like that. It's this. It's being with the students. It's being with the, su the superintendents, and it's you know it's it's uh, coming to things like At Cave. Yep. It's just uh, it's nice to have a job where people get along. They support each other. If you need something at the college, people fall out, fall over themselves. To help you out, so I have always considered myself very blessed to have the job that I do um, at Gateway because it's uh, it's fun. It actually is fun. You know, you get to spend time with students, but you get to work with industry too. Yes. And that I enjoy working with industry tremendously. And uh, what do you need? And we'll find a way to sure. We'll find a way to get it to you. Sure. You know, uh, on a personal side, what do you do, what do you like to do for hobbies? I know you. Uh, 
Oh. You do some kayaking. I do. You yeah, do I go. Hiking. I go. I go canoeing. I go biking. I uh, swim like five miles a week. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I'm a big swimmer. Uh, do a lot of things. Uh, do a lot of things at my church. Uh huh. I'm not somebody who uh, sits still uh, very well, so I like to. Uh, Try and keep as busy as I can. Well, you know, like I say, uh, uh, a rolling stone gathers no moss, <laughs> as, as, as they say. So anyway, I know, Wes, it's been a pleasure, you know, throughout the years working with you. Uh, you know, I you know, when I got my certification. Okay, I went through Gateway <laughs> as well. And, uh, you know, in North Haven and down, uh, in fact, when you were uh, down next to Regional Water Authority there. Now you got a brand new campus down in in, in downtown New Haven, and uh, how, how has that gotten? Yeah, that's uh, the campus is nice. I guess that's one thing I should say is that um, in terms of the, the 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 formatting of the courses is we've we've found good success using what is called live remote online. Okay, which means that there's a scheduled time for the class to meet. Yep, but the courses are done through WebEx, which is very similar to Zoom. Okay. Because we cover the entire state of Connecticut, mm-hmm. and like I always say, uh, when I'm talking to my uh, dean about why we should continue to do that, uh, it's a long way from um, um, Winstead to New Haven. It takes you an hour and a half to get to New- Winstead from New Haven. So right, right. If we're going to cover the whole state, that format seems to work uh, well. So I think the, the the plan is to continue to do that, uh, so it's accessible to people anywhere in the state of Connecticut. And we occasionally get some people that uh, attend the classes from out of state as well. Sure. Well, I think if the, the one thing COVID has taught us uh, is to adapt. And I think, uh, uh, you know, how did that affect uh, the, the program, okay, with the, uh, you know, with the pandemic? Well, it, it, uh, it was kind of tough because it was the middle of the spring semester in 2020, and uh, we found out on a Tuesday that we're going to be uh, online for two weeks, and then we found out on a, the Thursday we're going to be online for the rest of the semester. And I, I was personally all set because I taught online before, but my adjuncts had not done that. So everybody stepped up, and we managed to uh, save the spring 2020 semester. But yeah. th- then the good news is it convinced us that uh, students really like that uh, the online, not completely online, but live remote online where you meet with the professor, you can ask questions, yep. and you can have online office hours and things sure. like that. So, yep. so that's one of the good things that came out of COVID because it kind of nudged us to, uh, to do more of that. And it's, it seems to work well. Well, I think, you know, the overall industry as, as a whole, I, I think businesses throughout the country have, uh, you know, had to adapt to that. Uh, a lot of, uh, Again, uh, employees working from home, and I think uh, from from that standpoint, I think a lot of businesses realize that uh, maybe they don't need to have as much high-priced office space <laughs> as they used to have. Yeah, so. I had a, I had a good conversation with a former colleague of mine from the the DEP, who's the the head of a 500-person nationwide uh, consulting firm today. Yeah, and uh, so I asked uh, Janine. I said, "What?" Uh, what do you do about uh, employees in terms of where they work? And she said, well, we do have some offices, but we do have a lot of flexibility with our employees about working remotely. Sure. But, uh, you know, and it's kind of case by case. They're, they're, they go from Anchorage to uh, Connecticut. They've yep. got offices all over the place. So wow. it's kind of site-specific what the, what the parameters are. But they've a uh, big consulting firm like that, environmental consulting firm, has come to appreciate that uh, people can be – just as productive working remotely as they can coming into the office every day. Well, there's 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 your technology. You know, I think it's uh, it's every place, and uh, you know, thank God we have it. Uh, you know that we're able to adapt and uh, uh, keep the ball rolling, keep the water flowing, uh, and, and go from there. So uh, that's that's great. I know. Uh, you know, like I say, you've been in the, in the, in the business a, a long time as well as I have. Uh, so uh, what, what are your plans for the future? Do, do you have any plans? You can still keep on doing what you're doing or uh, you, oh, lo- looking at maybe getting that canoe off the, off oh, the roof rack? <laughs> the short term, I'll keep con- doing what I'm doing. I am, I am very fortunate to have the job that I do, and we'll, we'll see what tomorrow may bring. There you go. There you go. Well, Wes, uh, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, coming over and uh, sitting down with the pod. This is our episode five, ladies and gentlemen, with the uh, the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about and the people that run them. And uh, Mr. Wes Winterbottom, professor at Gateway uh, Community College, has been an integral part of uh, uh, filling those uh, the, the water pipeline of operators uh, throughout the state. So, so Wes, thank you so much. Uh, say hello to Beth and. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our episode number five. And we are live here at the At Cave at the Aquaturf in Southington, Connecticut. And uh, uh, stay tuned for episode six. We're going to grab some operators here on the floor and uh, go from there. So thank you so much.